Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about secrets, secret code and JavaScript. So let's get into it. So the question in question here was, Frederick, how can I make my JavaScript code invisible or so that nobody can, can see it? Well, I can tell you that uh, the only way to do that is to pretty much keep it all on the server. That's it. But uh, my guess is that this question was more related to, all right, if you send something to the browser, if you have code running in the browser, how do you make sure that nobody like, reads that and sees your secrets, right? And uh, I think that's a fair question. Uh, the sad truth is that there is no way for you to do that. You, it's impossible. Uh, what you can do is that you can try to obscure your code. You can make it very hard to understand what's going on. You can, and this is usually, I mean, if you've ever used a bundler such as Rollup or Webpack or something like that, and you've seen the code that is shipped to the, uh, within these bundle files, you will see that it's kind of hard to see what's going on. There are, of course, more even more optimized versions of this if you look at some of the products provided by the big IT companies, they have even more obscure code than that. So these, this is, I mean, it's still code. I mean, it is working running code, but you may have changed every single variable name to a single letter and things like that. And in JavaScript, I mean, something that is that you can do there is you can even evaluate things as strings in certain cases. So you could, you know, base 64 encode code and just, you know, have a function that converts and uh, does all this stuff into actual like from base 64 to code and so forth and so forth. But the the fundamental uh, like the the the, the, the all what the, all you're doing is basically that you're making it hard to read the code. But you can never make like you have shipped the code. That's why it's called why we call these things assets or static assets. These are files that are sent to the browser in order for them to execute. And as long as they're being sent to the browser, they actually exist on the clients or the, the person, the user who is visiting your web page on their computer. And if they have the file, they can read it. That's pretty much uh, the, that's bottom line. So uh, some people have been, and to a point, this is I think this is true. Like I remember when one thing that was very popular with the SBA discussion was that what's well, pretty cool about having this this decoupling between the server and the front end is that now we can ship like uh, a lot of heavy business logic to each client so that the server doesn't have to deal with it. Because as you can imagine, it's very cheap for the company if your computer is responsible for churning through something very heavy in terms of computation rather than having a poor server who needs to do that for maybe hundreds of users who are concur like who are all con concurrently or like connecting at the same time right uh, it's just that when we t say that sort of thing we need to be damn sure that we're not sending something very sensitive to the client it's uh, so it's a I mean, an example would, of a nice thing is if let's say that you're doing some type of image cropping or something with something like that, that could be potentially fairly heavy to do on the server. If you could fork that logic off into the browser, uh, that would be a very, you know, that would be a big saver for, for your company in terms of computation power. But it would be a really shitty idea to say, send something if you, let's say that you have some magical algorithm that knows how to make a lot of money to send that to the client because if that's that that's secret business logic that if it leaks out you could potentially risk uh, somebody copying it or something like that so having this uh, like forking it like moving the logic to the front end or like sending javascript that does most of this these computations should be done if you can feel confident that it doesn't really matter like there's no secret within that code and that is if you think about it that's usually the case for a lot of javascript it's uh, it's very rare that you create a ui application of some sort where there's a secret trick or a secret code or something that is very specific and sensitive to your company it's very rare that that happens because most of the time what you're doing within 
JavaScript land and front end and so forth, is that you're making things look a certain way or behave a certain way when you're interacting with it. And this is logic that you're just going to have to accept that people will have access to. Uh, that's pretty much it. This is one of those things where uh, in the games industry, they've had this problem for a very, very long time and they still have it in many senses where crackers or people who basically are in the business of uh, compromising games, uh, they are able to do this simply because the uh, code is on their computer. Uh, it's uh, actually funny because one, like uh, quite a lot of companies prefer to have an online presence. This is one of the big, big, big reasons why the internet is such a powerful entity for corporations and different groups who want to provide a service without compromising their own ability to, like their own revenue stream. Because it's the same thing when you're making products. If you're making a secret product that does something cool and magical and you don't want your competitors to know about it, well, if you, they can go to any store and buy it, then they can reverse engineer it. It's just a matter of time. That's exactly how it works in the games industry. You buy a game, you download the files, and the crackers will look at all those files and figure out how it works and create an exploit for it. But if you have a web server, if all the logic regarding related to how the system works, is never on the user's computer. It's never there. It's just the UI that is on your computer, such as with the web. Then you can keep all your business logic secret. That's the thing. So that, that's, why, that's one of the main reasons why the web is so damn popular for companies. To, like, if they can have a web-oriented application, that's pretty much always going to cause them less problems than if you, they have a desktop equivalent. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you want to hide your JavaScript code that you're sending in your browser, all you can do is to obscure it and make it hard to read it. But if somebody really wants to, they can figure out how it works. So any logic that you're sending to the browser, just remember that that is pub basically public domain. It's public information that, will, that can be copied or stolen or something like that because you gave it away. So if you want to keep things secret, you need to keep it on the server because the server doesn't like you're if you're not showing that source code to anybody, they can't find it and they can't like read it. And this is one of the main things behind why companies really, really do like to have a web application as opposed to a desktop application, because to keep their secrets, it's much more secure to have a web server than it is to send their application logic to some third party that could in theory be copying it or reverse engineering it for their own purposes. Have a great day.